I thought I'd shoot a little video about meditation and why I do it and why it's important and what it means to me and all that sort of a thing. So I thought I'd drag you into that. We could talk just a little bit about um, what's important about it, why I do it, etc. And I'll just walk you through how I do it. So one thing I find is that a lot of people think of uh, meditation as a very um, – you know, it's like an overly spiritual kind of a thing. And I get that. I mean, it's a it's a spiritual practice. Hey, Chloe. But another thing that meditation is, is actually just a very physiological, biological, function-based product that you can do to make yourself feel a little bit better. It improves your resilience. Um, and in a lot of ways, it acts a little bit like mental floss. You know, it clears some of your thoughts out, unless you really kind of recenter. So one thing that I do dealing with uh, clinical depression in general is uh, I've learned to, if I can stop and just take some breaths, it really helps. Uh, pain management, breathing matters. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can you can really tap into some strength when you deal with uh, you know meditation. And and again, I, I don't think of it as an especially spiritual act, although you can do it in that way. I mean, things like, you know, um, people practicing the rosary, people practicing anything where they have to, like, you know, repeat a bunch of words over and over again, uh, Sanskrit chants, that sort of a thing. You know, there's all these different ways, right? So you don't need any kind of hardware to do meditation. You don't need any tools. Um, but one thing I find is that it, with me, if I want to not focus too hard on the uh, how long have I been doing it? Because, you know, a lot of times we start something and we're like, oh my gosh, has this been forever? And sometimes it just really hasn't. So I use uh, uh, meditation beads. So you've seen these probably yoga beads and that sort of thing, just meditation beads. These are, there's basically 108 of them. They look like a rosary if you're Catholic or whatever. My mom made these ones. And there's basically 108 beads plus this big fatty. And so what, what I do is I start on the very first bead. And then every time I breathe out, I go to the next bead. So with my meditation practice, I close my eyes and I just go. And as I breathe out, I'm grabbing the next bead. And then I breathe in. And then as I breathe out, I go to the next bead. And that's all I do. Now, again, there's lots of different ways to meditate. Some people, it's just about breathing. Some people uh, do a, a chant of some kind or a hum of some kind. Some people, oops, some people do um, a variety of different methods to get their, their breathing just right for something like this. One detail I want to say is that if try a bunch of different ways, and whichever one works is the one that you can use. So um, Navy SEALs teach a, a lot about, uh, Commander Mark Devine, for instance, teaches a lot about uh, box breathing. So you go in for four, hold it for four, out for four. So you go. Etc. Also, learning a little bit about this, um, uh, Jacqueline Carly told me that there's a great book out about called Breathe, talking about the dangers of mouth breathing, which I found fascinating because I don't really think about it much. Sometimes I breathe through my mouth. Sometimes I breathe through my nose. But she talks about the fact that there's, you know, this new book out there about that. I can't remember uh, the detail and I didn't think I was going to bring it up. So I didn't actually put it up on my screen or anything. So I'll find it for you later. Um, the other way you can do it though is you could chant something. So you could do like a Sanskrit chant. Uh, you could, you could pray to any of the, you know, various uh, Sanskrit people like um, uh, Lord Ganesh. So you could just breathe in and you could just say to yourself, Om Gom Ganapataye, Om Gom Ganapataye, Om Gom Ganapataye. Now you could do this for any religion you want. You could pray to Allah, you could pray to Jesus, you could pray to anybody. You don't have to be praying to, you're just breathing. And what the meditation does, the mechanics of what meditation does, is it tries really hard to kind of get you out of the future and out of the past. Because that's the biggest problem we have, is we spend a lot of our mental time in the future and in the past, right? So what we have to do, we have to really think about the fact that, you know, maybe it would benefit us not to spend as much time thinking there. And maybe it would benefit us to uh, set ourselves up to think about, um, you know, right now and that we're okay for right now, right? Because things that bother us are almost always something that bothered us from the past or some worry that's coming from the future, right? So that's where meditation gets important right away, right? Like one of the things that happens is, you start thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to work my way through. Like, so with my beads, I just work my way through one bead at a time, one bead at a time. When I get to the end, that's 108. It means I tried my best to sit still 
for 108 full breaths. Four or five times I've done it twice. So I've done like 216, but most of the times it's just my 108. Then what I found is kind of an odd side effect. And I don't do it all the time because, you know, wearing these things around the house isn't exactly super uh, lightweight or anything is I will throw these on my wrist sometimes like a bracelet, uh, which looks like I'm going to start my own uh, yoga practice or something. But what I found is that when I have those handy, it reminds me to take them off and breathe some more. It reminds me, even if I just need to breathe for a little bit, even if I need to breathe in five, six times or whatever, as few as eight very deep breaths in, a little bit of a hold and eight deep breaths out can really change your chemical state, your mental state. And you don't like, you don't have to worry about going and finding a quiet place to do this. You could actually do this at work. You could do this, you know, any, anywhere, but like maybe driving your car. Um, because there's a lot of times we might need a state change in between things and, and that might be useful. So I think that the uh, methods uh, are neat because they're portable and you can do them anywhere. Chloe points out there's a lot of apps uh, for meditation and that some of them are not exactly as uh, intuitive. I mean, what, what any of the goals of any of the meditation methods are is to get you out of thinking forward and to get you out of thinking past. You're just breathing. So there's a lot of people doing online daily meditations where you can sit with other people and do it. There's a lot of people doing it with some music. There's a lot of people doing it in lots of different ways. But, you know, just pick the one that's going to work for you, right? It, for me, it is a purely functional thing. And so pick the one that's going to work for you. I don't really intend for this to be a particularly long video. I just wanted to stop in, talk about this, make sure that we can, you know, talk about things that matter because this is definitely something that needs to go in your backpack. So, uh, Deborah, thanks for swinging by as well. I am so grateful that, you know, we can talk about these things because it is. It's another tool that goes in the backpack. And so that's why you have to have it. Thanks again. I'm going to leave. Good talking to you.